Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models. I hope all you people out there in internet land are doing okay, staying healthy, staying safe. That's what's important right now. And uh, yeah, I've been taking advantage of a little more painting time. I'm still working. So I work in an essential service. So right now I've been, uh, I'm still working. So I'm, I'm painting a little bit on the sides. Obviously I can't do a whole lot outside, so I've been taking advantage of that. And I should be filming some more Painting with Jay, is what I've determined. And uh, I'll be talking about that today in this week's episode um, as I'm working on some uh, some more ad mech. So I'm, I've been really crushing my ad mech army. Uh, my army's coming along really well. This is probably, I probably have three more weeks of ad mech after this week. We'll see. I, my goal is to have it done by the end of uh, May. And uh, we're going to keep going. As always, a huge shout out to Cody Rue, Adam, you missed a spot. And let's get started. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. So I'm going to start off by working on uh, some ad mech stalkers. Not stalkers. Um, infiltrators. And so I'm just basing them right now. They're pretty much painted. I liked where they are right now. I might do a highlight color later on. I do think the reds are a little flat, but they're not bad. As you can see, they're not too bad. So I'm going to start by basing them, get them all done, and then I'm going to work on some uh, data smiths. As you can see, data smiths. Um, I've been working really hard on my army, and I'll be talking about that today. So of course, I'll be starting off by taking some uh, Morning Paint Brown, Morning Paint Brown, putting it on my in my palette. And doing a little bit of a dry brush to bring out some um, basing colors. I really do regret. Um, I painted on. I started off my my Admech army a long, long time ago, and I painted it a certain way. In retrospect, I would I should have done margin. I really should have. If I had, if I started it today again with a completely fresh basing scheme, I would have done like red. I I don't have a red um, based army. And it's cool to do. Uh, most of mine are just my standard brown and uh, with grass that I'm doing in this one. So you'll see me continuing this color scheme tradition. But uh, that's okay. You know, as I said, I'm not too. I'm not upset by it or anything. I just would have done it differently. I do like the margin color scheme. Even maybe if I did just using the margin um, technical paints. You know the uh, uh, the the texture paints. That'd be kind of cool. I will use textured paints on my next army. I've decided that I'm going to do a um, whole army with very... I just want to try one army with the contrast paints and give them a really fair shot on all the troops. The more detailed models I'll paint using uh, a bit more complex colors, you know, and maybe the HQs. But, um, yeah. So here's my Admech army, right? And my Admech army has been coming along well. I finished those robots a while ago. It was my last video. I believe I worked on the robots. Um, right now, I'm. this is my, my Admech army. So it's coming along. And the thing is with Admech, number one, it's, it's surprisingly crazy of a horde army. Like, I have all these models painted, and I did the math the other day. I don't even have 2,000 points yet of painted models. Now, the good thing about with Admech is that you can throw in a knight. And um, you can always just you know throw in a knight to balance out your army and to add more points. And so I have tons of knights. You know I worked on my knight army late last year, early this year, and I have all my knights painted. Um, so that's good. I can always throw in a knight. Um, but I'd really like to eventually have a brigade and, and like two thousand points of pure ad mech. That'd be kind of fun. But the downside, though, with Admech is that, again, they're, they're very cheap on points, so you can get a lot of them, but there's not a lot of choices. There really isn't. Like, uh, the people who play pure Admech must have a lot of fun just cramming as many models as they can into their army. Like, you can run a... For 2,000 points, you can run a double brigade. Um, totally. Right? Totally. Um, but you kind of run out of options, right? Because you only have, obviously, you, the rule of three doesn't apply to troops, so you can run tons of troops. I have enough troops right now to run... Uh, can I do a double brigade? No. I only have 40. Sorry, not brigade. Uh, yeah, brigade, sorry. I can do a battalion and a brigade. I only have 40. I only... No, no I do have... 
Uh, how many do I have? I have 40 rangers, which could be divided to eight squads of five. Six in one, two in the other. Yeah. And then I have a squad of... Uh, Castell not Castellans, the uh, guys on the tracks. So I only have, you know... Yeah, I only have nine troops choices. So I could do a brigade and a battalion. I have, uh, when I'm done painting, I currently have painted four, one, two, three, four HQs. I need six, no, I guess six, uh, five for a battalion and brigade, but I have six already. Um, I'm going to have uh, eight by the time I'm done. How many have I painted so far? I've painted up four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, and I have another four. So I have eight HQs total. So I'm done the first color already. This will be a pretty fast process. These couple steps, and I'm getting to the data smiths shortly. So I'm going to now take some XV88, my next color. Once again, put a little bit on my palette and dry brush some texture, and then I'll, I'll glue the, uh, the, the grass. Um, that's it, right? Really, for, for HQs, you have a bunch of choices. Yeah, not a bunch. You have a few choices. If you're running uh, Mars, and, like I am, running Mars, Mars, um, you can choose um, Cas not Castell and Crow. I'm see, I'm, I'm really terrible with my names today. I should have prepared for this painting with Jay. But uh... <laughs> I'm gonna go this. How many HQ cho slots choices do we actually have? Uh, Belsar's Call was the one I was thinking of. And so we have Belsar's Call, Tech Breach Dominus, Tech Breach Ends and Seer. So really three here. Um, but there's a couple that were done in some box sets. And uh, so you technically can have more than that. Now, by the time I'm done painting my Admech Army, I'm going to have Belsar's Call. He's all painted up. I'm going to have four Tech Priest Dominuses because. Everything comes with a Tech Priest Dominus. I had two of the start collecting um, Skatari sets, or whatever it was called back then. I think it was, back then it was called, yeah, start collecting Skatari. Uh, maybe it was called Admech. I don't remember, I threw out the boxes. But, um, so I had, I have two of those, so two Tech Priest Dominuses for those. One from the, uh, that starter set that came with the Necrons, right? When the first, the first, um, the new Knights, Came out. There was that one set with Necrons and Admech that had a Tech Priest, and then I bought the um, the Battalion, not the uh, the Apocalypse Formation box because I wanted a bunch of, of robots, and that also came with a Tech Priest Dominus. So I have four Tech Priest Dominuses, which is good because in case I run on like a double Tech Priest Dominus list, you know, that's not um, margin. If it's not Mars. It gives me some choices because. Belsarius Call only works for Mars, right? But he makes Mars really awesome. I like a lot of their rules. Um, and then I have two Tech Priest Engine Seers, which are the really, really, really cheap ones. I have a metal one and a uh, non-metal one. And um, I have two of those. The reason why I have two, I, already had, I found one that I already had unpainted, and I ordered another one because they're very cheap. HQ choices. They're only 30 points, and with one of the um, specialist attachments, you can make them kind of a mini data smith. So if I don't want to run any data smiths, I don't have to. Of course, data smiths are a very cheap elite option, and that's the thing. The elite option, really, the majority of the choices of this codex are in the elite slot, and unfortunately, it's pr like I, I'd have to double check, but in my opinion, you know, I, I like to double check with some of my AdMech friends. I know my friend Dave plays AdMech. Um, but uh, it, the elites are really weak in this codex. You know, I, I looked at the priests. I was like, all right, maybe we should get some of the priest boxes. But I looked at them, and they're meh, you know. They're meh. They're not. They're okay. They're okay at close combat, you know. Um, I really liked these guys. So I bought a couple boxes of the Infiltrators, and I'll make oh, 10 of them. 
Um, I like them over the better. I like them better over the Rust Stalkers, just because I like their their five shot pistols and that they can deep strike and you know do a bunch of shots. And you can combine them with um, what's called Wrath of Mars or uh, where the one stratagem is, which makes it pretty deadly. Um, I'm just gonna get a drink. So, makes them kind of cool. I figured, yeah, they have their taser goads. Um, that's it. So let's glue some uh, some grass, some grass flock here. I think I'm still in focus. Let's take a look here. Hello, we're ten minutes in. I'm already finishing up these models. Good. So, awesome. I'm gonna take some glue. Finish basing these guys and then start on the data smiths. Um, so the elite slot is really bloated, but I don't like a lot of choices. The data smith is probably where I would. Um, I'm just putting some glue on the base here. Um, a little bit there. Mm, put a couple spots of grass. Um, and so the elites aren't very good. I think that's the weakest section of this codex is the elites because the HQs they have some really cheap HQs that are good. Um, the data smiths are actually decent in close combat. They have like they have fists basically, power claws, power fists, um, and uh, they work well with the robots. So that's probably you know what I'm going to do. And plus they're the one of the cheapest. Other than servitors, I believe they're the cheapest elite choice. So if I want to run a brigade and a battalion, now if I want to run a brigade, I have I have three. Put them over there. I have, I have four priests alone. Sorry, data smiths. Sorry, I have four data smiths and these infiltrators. So I have five, uh, up to five slots worth of elites, which is good. Um, now I only have three fast attacks, but that's all I would need for a brigade. Um, yeah, I have three fast attacks. I'm going to make them probably all into Dragoons, I think, because I really do like the look of the Dragoons with the giant lances. And, um, both, both of the fast, there's only two fast attack choices, right? And it's the same box, so it's a pretty easy box. Now, that's the thing, though, because... GW did announce at the last, uh, the la not the one from this weekend, the announcement from this weekend, the uh, reveal from, uh, from, I believe it was LVO. Uh, from LVO, they announced that they're going to, um, they're going to bring out a couple more, they got to be fast attacks. I doubt that they're going to be uh, elites because they're, uh, Skitari, they're um, Skitari on horses, like these horses that look like they're like the apocalypse horses, like the the uh, the four you know the, the the horsemen of the apocalypse, which I really like. They're cool, and there's also jump pack flyer guys. So I am uh, I'm kind of waiting for those, and I will I'll pick up a, probably a couple boxes of them when they come out of each one. Because there's um, there's a couple choices it looks like for each each um, one, so that's cool. And uh, flesh out my army that way because that'd be really cool, you know. And I'm now at that stage where I've been I'm so far along in my painting with Jay journey that I don't have any guilt that if I want to buy a box like a couple boxes of those when they come out, I can do so. Because at that point, I'm probably going to be painting my next army. So maybe I'll take a break for a couple weeks, return to AdMech, get them all done, and have some newer guys that I can play in, in some games and some tournaments. I really do want to play some tournaments. I've been just craving playing. I've been painting so much lately. And I have all these models that are painted now that I just want to play. 
And so, uh, but of course, like my, my friend Dave is, is wisely in quarantine, not quarantine, uh, whatever it's called, isolation or quarantine. He's not sick to my knowledge, but he's, his family is just in quarantine as we're supposed to. I think quarantine is if you're not sick, either way, he ain't coming out. I don't blame him. I think my friend Stu is sick right now. I don't think he has the, co the coronavirus, but uh, Stu, if you're out there, hopefully you're feeling better. And uh, yeah, so right now I'm just not playing because no one should be coming to my house, right? We're supposed to be in isolation when we're not working. As I mentioned, I am a, what's defined in Canada as an essential service. But of course, if you see the list of what's an essential service in Ontario, it's like everything is an essential service. Other than like a few handful of jobs. Um, here's the last guy. And then look at that, they're done. Another squad complete. Which is pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm really kicking butt on these Admit guys. They're fun. I really enjoyed painting them. Red is like my least favorite color to paint. And that's why I forced myself to have a red army. Um, I do try to... I intentionally, without even kind of looking at the rules, I like... I go with color schemes most of the time when I decide my army. Um, and I usually just choose a different color. You know, because my orcs are a combination of green and blue. Right? Because I, I love blue. My Tyranids are blue. Um, my Grey Knights are obviously silver. Um, my uh, Dark Angels are green and bone and black, depending on which color, you know, which one suits them. Um, and so, when I started painting new armies, I intentionally went with colors that I don't normally paint. Um, I really liked, the only one that was, I did choose implicitly was Hawk Shroud for my uh, Knights. I wanted yellow. I liked the yellow and black combination. There you go. They're all done. So I'll set these guys to the back, um, and I'll, that's it, one squad done. Um, and basically, I, uh, let me put that there. So then for my Space Marines, I was like, well, what armies do I really like? I'm just getting a drink. I really like the, the, the color. And I didn't have a yellow army at the time for my Imperial Fists. And so, I and I like the lore. And so, I painted Imperial Fists. And, uh, yeah, that's why I, had, I chose my Imperial Fist army. I didn't have a yellow army. I really wanted to paint yellow. And then for these guys, I was like, okay, fine. You know what? I don't have any red. I don't have a red army. I don't. And so, I was like, you know what? Because I'm not a big fan of red. Red, it just, it's, it's a color that it always annoys me to paint. Uh, it's always a, like a messy color. It's always messy. Like every time I paint with red, it gets everywhere. It bleeds over things. And so, oh, and right now I'm just taking some Ushabti bone. I'm gonna clean up the bone areas. I just gave them a wash and it dried. Um, and then I will uh, continue onwards, as I said. But, uh, so for this army, I went like, you know what? Let's go red. It's the, it's a standard army scheme. Let's do red. And then for my next army, uh, I think you guys already know which my next army is, but, uh, it's Gene Stealer Cult. Spoil it now. Um, I'm going to do orange because I don't have an orange army. And so I figured Knight of the, uh, the Rusted Cog army. And it'll be a fun army to paint, right? And I decided for that army, I'm going to... Uh, for that army, I'm gonna do orange. So that'll be fun. So right now I'm just taking some Shafty Bone. Now I should mention all my, whenever I'm painting with my normal colors on models, not the basing, I do thin down my paints, of course, with Lamia Medium. I've been getting that question a lot lately in videos, so I figured might as well just mention it whenever I can. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And for my army, for these guys, I actually, um, I did a combination. Technically, half of them are Metallica. Uh, my Skatari are Metallica. My Cult Mechanicus are... Uh, sorry, my Cult Mechanics are, are Metallica, my Skatari are Margin, but they work together very well. 
and so I don't really care because obviously I can just swap them to and from. Um, I'm not uh, yeah too worried because they're both red and bone, right? This would be my this would be a data smith that is. Um, let me just show you, and this is a you know one on uh, it's well on its way. But as you can see, the color schemes they're almost inverted. So bone and red still works because, and this one's red and bone. You know, a little more silver on this one, but they still work quite well with each other. So it doesn't really matter, you know, they're both. And so I'm painting a combination. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of Screaming Skull. There we go. And finish up just a bit of a highlight. But uh, as you can see, they, they both work, right? They, so it works well together. It, they're not uh, two art of colors, so half of my Tech Priest Dominuses are going to be um, Metallica color schemed, and half of them are going to be um, Marjum, Mars, and uh, yeah, I don't care. They're both going to be tournament ready, so I'm just going to take some uh, some Screaming Skull to a quick highlight, make this really pop. And then I'm going to get started on all of the um, all the silver areas. Yeah, I got all the silver areas done. Um, the silver areas I've done them on this guy pretty much. I think there's one spot I missed. I pulled an Adam. Adam, you missed a spot. It's been a while since I've said that. I'm wondering if Adam's forgotten that he's missed spots because it's been so long since I've reminded them how he's missed spots. Um, only I can prevent Adam from missing spots, apparently. And so I'm going to do the silvers on this guy for first, and then uh, a shade. And that'll probably take me to the end of the video anyway because there's a lot of silver, as you can see, on the other guy. But uh, that's okay. Get as much done as I can in this video, and then keep going. You know, that's that's what I'm gonna do. Keep painting. I'm uh, really crushing my abnac. After this, I have another. I should have another five infiltrators arriving sometime in the near future. I ordered them. One of my gaming stores is still shipping, so. Cool. There we go. So now let's paint some silver. I'm gonna take some. Um, some lead belcher, put tons in my palette, because you're going to see I will be painting a lot of lead belcher, and that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that should be enough for now. Um, Adepticon was obviously this weekend. It really hurt. I understand this reason for isolation. I understand why we can't go. I very much do. I very much do. It makes sense to keep us separated and that way we don't spread the disease. It just really sucks. It really sucks. Here we go. So let's get started on some silvers. Um, it just It's tough because I really was looking forward to Adepticon. It's the one time a year I really get to catch up with my gaming friends. A lot of my friends are American and uh, I'm Canadian, obviously. And uh, I don't know if obviously, eh? <laughs> But I really was looking forward to hanging out with them, like the, the Death Ray Designs crew, especially um, my friend Ken from Badger Airbrushes. Um, I was just really looking forward to seeing them and, and you know helping out the Badger booth and get, just having a good time. I love, I love Adepticon. It's such a good convention. And it, it's always been my break in the winter time. Like it's, it's a sign of spring. You know, but winter time is tough, and then I get my little vacation, 
which is Adepticon, just three days of gaming and hanging out with my friends and catching up and doing stuff and eating American food, which is always more dangerous and fun and worse for you, but so much tastier than Canadian food even. Um, and I didn't get that this year. And it, I understand why I do. It just sucks. And I know so many other people are going through the same thing. And we all understand that we got to do our job. And that's it too. I've been not going out very much. I've been, um, I've been intentionally, you know, staying home whenever I'm not working. Um, I still work a lot. So, you know, I still work Monday to Friday, you know, 40 hours plus a week. Um, so that didn't change or anything. Um, my job, the hours were slightly diminished, but I still work. Um, yeah, so I don't, um, I was just really needing a debt to come, and that's okay. Um, next year, next year. It's just these, these years fly by so fast. They really do. And, uh, you know, they fly by. I'll see them all next year. Maybe I should drive all the way to Chicago one day and visit Ken. Go to a, Red, a White Sox game. If baseball ever comes back. That's the thing. And also right now, obviously, it's, it's such a weird scenario. Like, it's so weird when you can't drive anywhere. The gas prices, like, everything's tied together, obviously. And it's, it's so weirdly ironic in the sense that, like, right now, well, it's supply and demand as well, it makes sense. But um, it's so weirdly ironic that, like, obviously gas prices are not going to be cheaper than they are now. Like, gas prices are historically low right now. But you can't drive anymore. <laughs> I'm going to probably go to the gas station today and get some gas. Um just for, you know, for my lawnmower when it starts up soon. Uh, fill that up. But gas prices are cheap. Obviously, flights are all canceled right now. But, uh, and then we're all at home. And the number one thing most people like to watch, like most people watch, sports. But there's no sports. And then it gets more uh, iron break or lead belcher. There's no sports, right? Sports are all canceled. And so even the Olympics, which was wisely canceled. Canada was actually I think, the first country to pull out of the Olympics. Um, wisely, once again, very, I would not go. And that's a question. How long is on, it's on everyone's minds. How long will this last? That's it. How long will it last? And nobody knows. We're just, right now, the way that Canada and the US are doing is we're just trying to delay it. Um, and depending on where you are in the world, certain countries are definitely way worsely affected than Canada is right now. Uh, Canada's not in the worst country so far, not even per capita. Like Italy, Spain, are worse than China right now. U.S. is having tons of cases too. Now, I always do wonder about these numbers. Obviously, they're, they're reliant on a few other things. Like uh, in Canada, it's apparently quite hard to get tested. And so, oh, I missed a smile on this guy as well. Um, I just caught myself on that one. I wanted to remind myself to paint these little bands of silver. Um, but, Um, it's been quite hard to get tested. I've had a few friends who've even been showing symptoms. My brother was showing some symptoms. Now he's better now, and I don't think, looking back, I don't think he had it. And right now, obviously, they, they have a very limited number of tests, so they're holding it for people who've been out of the country. 
or definitely been in contact with someone who's been out of the country and showing signs, whatever I agree. I know they have to, they have a limited number of tests. So they have to allocate them in a specific way, makes sense. But I'm wondering if the lack of just testing is, is the reason why Canada hasn't had as many per capita as other countries like the United States. Because, well, I, do, I do obviously do know that they're, like in the States, obviously people are much more um, densely populated. In Canada, it's only along the borders. You know, within like two hours of the border or an hour of the border, you'll get very densely populated cities, but nothing like the States, right? Because Canada as a whole, now Canada, the thing is in Canada, obviously most of Canada goes unused. If you look at square footage, right? Like the entire North doesn't get used very much or it's used by a very small amount of people. Um, but like Canada has a larger, I believe it's a larger surface area than the United States and one tenth the population, right? And that's it. And the United States is equally like, it's not perfectly equally densely populated, but it's all densely populated. You know, it's not, uh, it's not like Canada where if you drive an hour south of the border, the Canadian U S border, you get, or two hours, you know, south, the density drops drastically. It's, it's not the case. I believe the most density cities are New York City, uh, California, would have uh, like LA, um, Texas would have um, a few densely populated. Yeah, Houston would be Dallas. Um, no. It's interesting. So obviously the density is affecting this too. Yeah. But uh, Canada just does not have the same per capita number of cases. We have less than 10% of the number of cases that the United States has. Meanwhile, we have about 10% of the population. So what's affecting that? Maybe density, maybe that's a factor, maybe just we're not testing. We have a bunch of people that just are going unrecorded. So we'll see. It's just how long will this go for? I don't know. I've been I've, I have gone shopping a couple of times. I've had to. When I do, I go like a man on a mission. I don't lollygag or dilly daddle or whatever young people use these days. Gallivant um, around town. I just uh, go with, on a mission. I get exactly what I need and I get out. I social distance, as the cool word says. Um, I social distance. I don't touch my face, and I even wear gloves when I'm um, in there. And I don't, of course, throw my gloves on the ground. I throw my gloves in the garbage. I have airbrush gloves that I, you know, I have my gloves that I use for airbrushing, so it's perfect. Um, but I hate the people that throw. You can see them on the ground. And I'm like, why do you people throw the gloves on the ground? That's so mean. There's countless cases of people taking advantage of the situation. You know, uh, price gougers. Now in Ontario, they just introduced legislation and I think they did in the States as well from what I've been hearing. Some legislation that if you get caught being one of these price gouger people or company, you are in big trouble. That makes sense. You shouldn't take advantage of the situation. I There's nowhere anywhere near me that even has... Lysol wipes, like uh, toilet paper was the first thing that really disappeared fast, surprisingly. Um, Lysol wipes and hand sanitizer, obviously, were the others that were really big and disappeared. And those ones have not come back yet. We can't get hand sanitizer or Lysol wipes anywhere, you know, within 100 kilometers of my house. That sucks. Um... 
sorry, I'm just checking the other guy to see what I painted uh, silver. But uh, they'll come back eventually. Lysol's like out. I think Lysol is entirely out. You can go to their website, it's like we're out. Um, so hopefully they, they come back soon. Now, my girlfriend and I did, we didn't panic buy. We actually, about a, like two weeks before, um, the craziness started, we bought a pack. So we have some left right now. You know? Not that much left. We'll run out in the next week or so, probably. And then just use cleaners. But there's all these videos of like, people really taking advantage, putting them on eBay. Makes me sad. It, right now is the time to come together and help each other. You know, not do that crap. Um, yeah. What else? I've also noticed that, um, this situation has really Uh, I don't know what my girlfriend's watching upstairs, but it's that song, that old 80s song, I'm turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. Just came on. Uh, I don't know, that's really weird. But uh, <laughs> I think that this current situation has really accented the difference between the classes of people. Uh, not as bad in Canada. Really, really badly in the United States, I found. Um, because in Canada we do have, we do have universal health care. Now for all my American friends who aren't Bernie Sanders supporters, whatever, I'm not going to get into that. I love our health care system. Um, it's not perfect, but I know that if I got sick today, I can go to the hospital. Um, I have some family members right now that are very sick and I know that our system will help take care of them and they won't go bankrupt as a result of um, their situations. And that makes me feel good. You know, that's my argument. That's just my argument. If you disagree, awesome, you can. There's uh, a lot of my viewers are in the United States and they don't, uh, I know for a fact several of them don't support universal healthcare. That's okay. If you don't want to, you don't have to, right? That's the whole point. Um, but, um, it, it, it's nice. It really is. Um, but I found in the States especially that the difference between the classes is being so heavily uh, evident. It's just so evident right now in society. Because obviously a lot of celebrities are, out of, are temporarily out of work too because no one's filming right now with this coronavirus thing. But they, uh, they, they all got tested. Like, celebrities got tested, um, most of them not even showing any symptoms. Like, when uh, Idris Elba was tested, he was tested prior to showing any symptoms. And then there's so many uh, poorer people, or not as wealthy people, that can't get tested. And it's just like, okay. I think that's it. Look at that. Uh, I can paint more silvers if I miss any spots later. So this is obviously the one that I've, I painted last night and I've not done it yet. I've just painted the next couple steps, the shade, and I'll let this dry for a second and highlight up this one. But uh, that looks good. Look at that. See, we're an hour in, 40, 40 minutes in. So I'll get the shade done on him. And then it's like magic of television guy. Um, it's just, it, it really accentuates it because um, again, like it, certain people really want to get tested and certain people have the right. So it's just like, wow, in Canada, celebrities got tested too, mostly athletes because Canada doesn't have, like our prime minister got tested 
it's also because our Prime Minister, uh, Justin Trudeau, his wife, um, was actually sick. His wife came, um, she came back from a trip uh, and had it. So of course he got tested. He's been in isolation, doing a week, a daily speech thing from isolation. Uh, so now I'm just gonna take some Ironbreaker, do a quick dry brush and over brush, bring out the details in the silver areas that I just painted on the other guy. Um, right? Um, and let's get this guy done, and then I'll hit the other guy with a shade, come back to this guy, probably work on the brass areas next. Um, I don't like, I usually batch paint. I don't usually like having these two such a step apart, but I finished last night on a step and I just was like, you know what, I'll do a painting with Jay tomorrow. And it just gave me stuff to do, right? But really, I do hope all you out there in internet land are healthy and you're safe. You know, I really do. I don't want anybody else getting sick. I do feel, I'm not trying to be a pessimist, but I do feel that most of us are going to get it at some point. And that's the whole point of this flatten the curve movement is not, well, it will prevent, prevent as well. There is an area of prevention in that because by flattening the curve, less people are going to come down with it ultimately. But what we're doing is just we're, we're delaying it. Right, we're preventing all of us from getting sick at the same time. And therefore, you know, we can all just individually get dealt with at the hospital, not flood the hospitals. And that way, you know, we help. Right now, Canada is not flattening the curve overall. In fact, we're still exponentially growing. Uh, one province in particular, BC, is kind of, they're showing symptoms of flattening curve, which is a good thing. Obviously, they're showing signs that, they're, that their curve is starting to flatten. I don't know what in particular they're doing, but um, it's nice. Ontario is not. Um, Quebec, which again, could be the sign of maybe Quebec uh, there's a few parameters that I'm wondering are are looked into. Like is, is maybe is Quebec maybe testing more than Ontario? Um, one of the reasons they they think is because they actually had uh, their March break in Quebec typically happens at an earlier period than Ontario, and so Ontario when when March break happened, there were already precautionary measures in place to help prevent the spread. However, when um, Quebec went to March break. They did it earlier, and there weren't the same preventative measures in place because it was an earlier peak, and therefore a bunch of people traveled, a bunch of people came back, a bunch of people with kids, you know, spread. And that's it, too. Look at him. Look at this. This is good. He's coming along. This guy will definitely be done before next week's painting with Jay, as well as this guy. And I still have one more, but he's going to be in um, Metallica, and I decided I'm going to paint him up at the same time as I'm painting my Metallica... Um, uh, so these are the two, like I have these two guys left to paint two Metallica um, Tech Priest Dominuses I have one more Metallica Data Smith I have um, I have three more Iron Striders slash Dragoons not three more three period I haven't painted any of them yet Um, so let's do a shade. Grab my shade brush, grab some non oil. Let's apply a shade. Um, yeah, so I, I'm going to have three dragoons to paint. That will probably be my, maybe my next painting with Jay. Maybe not. I'm at the stage right now where I'm, I'm kind of in the models that I'm actually really looking forward to the dragoons. I just held off on the dragoons because I, number one, was debating between the, um, Balistari and the Dragoons. And number two, I have another one waiting in the wings. And I started painting my infiltrators before I ordered um, the next, uh, another pack of infiltrators. So I really, in retrospect, should just not painted them too. But uh, whatever. So I still have another pack of infiltrators um, that I will paint up nearly in the near future as well. 
And then I have my Dragoons, which I, I'm, they're going to be my next one. I'm in the stage where I still have a couple more of the really fun ones, and then just the remaining ones. You know that thing, when, whenever I'm painting an army, I always start with the ones that excite me, and I throw in, uh, I disperse the ones that don't excite me, and that way it's kind of a reward to myself that once I finish painting up these guys, you know, I can start painting another model that excites me, that I'm excited to paint. Like right now with this data smith, I don't think I'm going to run more than one or two data smiths in a list at a time, unless I was intentionally running like a brigade, and then I wanted I put two in or three in just to to fill up, you know, their cheap elite choice that they can also work well with robots. Um, but uh, it won't be, you know, these guys aren't my my go-to model for this army. So these are one of the ones I'm, I'm forcing myself to paint right now between the ones that are more interesting. And that way when I'm done painting these guys, I'll be having um, plenty, uh, some in more interesting ones. I said probably the Dragoons left next. And then that's, as I said, I'm, I'm really in the home stretch. I don't have a whole lot left. Um, and then once the new guys come out, the new um, fast attack ones, I'm definitely picking up a bunch of them. I'm probably going to buy two or three boxes of each one. Even if they're not really good, I don't care. They just look so cool. And I want them. So... Um, what else? I, I decided I don't think I'm gonna buy the the vehicle. To be honest, I'm not that impressed with it. The rules, they're okay. I'm not that impressed with. I don't need really need to transport. That's the only thing with Admech is um, their elite slots. Some of their elites, like these infiltrators, are pretty fast. Um, their fast attacks are pretty fast. Their troops aren't. Their trap. Their troops are not fast at all. Uh, and so it would make sense to give them a little flyer. But as I said, your opponent would just shoot them down. Unless you want to spam them, the only way in 40k um, is you got to run something that is not so other than like a knight. But if your opponent has an answer to it, you're in trouble. So the key is spam. Whatever. If you want an army, it, it, two is always more than twice as strong than one, and three is always way better than two. And that's how it works. And the more you you bring of a single thing, the better it is because. Sometimes synergy, obviously, uh, things will work together. But the main part is, is killability, <laughs> right? If I bring one Lehman Rust tank, if I'm an, uh, an Astro Militarum player, and I bring one Lehman Rust tank, I'm not going to say which one, maybe just a standard Lehman Rust. Yeah. Right, standard Lehman Rust. Uh, where am I at now? 45 minutes, good. I'm just going to blow my nose. I'm not actually sick. I just have a little runny nose. That's okay. As you can clearly hear by my voice, I'm actually feeling great. And even if I had a little runny nose, it is not the sign, a standard symptom of the coronavirus. So, um, what was I saying? Now let's get some brass going. Uh, so I'm going to grab some brass scorpion here. But, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So, if you bring one vehicle, one single thing, again, uh, or Space Marines, they love their uh, Repulsor Executioner, right? You bring one Repulsor Executioner. Your opponent just simply says, okay, when you put that Repulsor Executioner on the table, your opponent is going to ask him or herself, I'm just going to grab this for a second, him or herself, do I need to kill that Repulsor Executioner? Is that Repulsor Executioner threat? Let's let's go over the list for a sec. Most people say that Repulsor Executioner is a threat. So if I go first, I'm uh, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to focus on it and kill it if I need to kill it. Um, there's not a lot of brass in this. I'm going to do okay. <laughs> So, if you bring one Repulsor Executioner, and I have this happen a lot whenever I, um, whenever I play 40k, because I'm not a, I don't play a lot of competitive games, to be honest. Even when I play in tournaments, I don't play a lot of competitive. But if you bring one of something to a competitive game, 
that one thing, unless it's a big, tough thing, right? Obviously, and there's certain lists, obviously, uh, there's exceptions to what I'm saying. Like, if you're gonna bring a monolith, you're not gonna bring three monoliths, the odds are. Um, but let's say Repulsor Executioner, which is a perfect example, because with Repulsor Executioners, um, they're a, a very good one, you know. So you bring one. Um, that one Repulsor Executioner probably won't survive turn one. Probably won't. If your opponent goes first, and your opponent, um, depending on your, your list, the target priority, the repulsor execution is probably quick on your target priority. So, what does that mean? It means that if you bring one, it probably won't survive turn one, right? And if you go first, you'll get some shots off. Cool. Uh, st hopefully, statistics are on your side. Or the number, the dice rolls are on your side, and you kill stuff. But if you go second, you may not get a shot off. Your opponent may just be like, pull the trigger on that, let's kill that thing now, let's get rid of it, it's too scary. Cool. Repeat this example, but now with two Repulsor Executioners, right? Your opponent, sh now, okay, now you have two Repulsor Executioners. Uh, even if your, your opponent kills one, the other one will still get the fire, right? So in this particular example, um, the second one, let's say your opponent goes first, your opponent kills the first Repulsor Executioner, doesn't kill the second one. Your second one gets a shot, your first one doesn't. So your second one is infinitely better, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it gets shots off and the other one doesn't. It doesn't get killed. And if, let's say you go first, you get twice as many shots the first one, your opponent turns around and kills one of them, and then your second one gets to shoot the second time. So you get, you know, three rounds of shooting after two turns. And in the first example, you only get one. So it's not it's not a one-to-one. -one. It doesn't work like that. It's not one-to-one. -one. So bringing two doesn't necessarily mean double is good. In fact, usually it's way more than double is good. And then same thing. You bring three Repulsor Executioners, and your opponent's just like, crap. You have to kill now. Obviously, if you're bringing three repulsor executioners, you're kind of you're in it to win it. You're playing a very competitive meta, or you're just not trying to make any friends, and um, that's it, right? You are not going to make many friends playing like that. But your opponent can then can then go, okay, I don't have like I have to kill three repulsor executioners, which is very very hard. You can't, you know, to kill them all in turn one would be a very big of a challenge. Maybe by the end of turn two, maybe if they get to go first. Certain, you know, but that and that's it. And so now, and that's that's kind of the way I. I don't play like that. So, when I'm playing games like with my friends Dave or Stu, I, uh, I tend it tends to take several games to figure out what's good and what isn't, or what I like and what I don't, because, a lot of the time I bring one, of something, and then. Dave or Stu will just take a look at it and go, hmm, that needs to die. And I do the same thing with, with Dave and Stu. Um, they will sometimes bring in like one cool new uh, thing, and I kill it turn one. But to know really how it acts, if you bring multiple of it, then you really go, oh, wow, you can see the stacking of... Um, Of how strong these things are. Mm, let's do that coil too. I'm really just in putting in some chrome, not chrome, uh, some brass to break up the silvers. Because it sends another color. But as you can see, he's really coming along. He's more than three color minimum. Uh, the next color is when I paint the gray liner, and that really does. Uh, it paints a lot of the coiling and, and cleans up the model really well. And then after that, there's only a couple more colors. I do the, the goggles, clean up some reds. Um, uh, in a second, I'm going to hit this, you know, with a, uh, a shading, uh, an Agrax Earth Shade. But I should probably stop here because I need to let this one dry. Um, I need to let the brass dry on that one, and I need to let the shade dry on the other one before proceeding to the next step. And I don't really have any backup models right now at the moment. So you know what? I'm going to stop here.
But as you can see, today we got a bunch of stuff done, right? This guy is looking good. He, has, he now has silvers. This one's, one's a couple steps ahead. Has brass, and I'll be shading that and painting these two over the next uh, week or so. So that concludes another Painting with Jay. I hope you got some stuff done. I hope you're, you're out there in internet land staying healthy, staying safe, staying isolated, and um, getting a lot of models done. This is a cool opportunity, I find, for us. Um, it's a very interesting opportunity, you know, that uh, it doesn't come along very often where you kind of can't go outside. So you might as well stay in. And when you're getting stuff done, like if you don't have kids like me, I can just paint. And it's been cool. It's been kind of a little bit of a catalyst to get stuff done. And I'm, I'm happy. The amount of models I've painted and finished over the last, you know, six weeks has been really good. And in a matter of, I'm guessing by the end of May, probably the next three or four weeks, I'll have the uh, ADMEC done. And I'll start my next army and go from there. So stay tuned for more Painting with Jay. I got to get back on these videos. Maybe I'll make another one this upcoming week and just keep going. Uh, make one a week for sure. Do some review videos as I, I don't have that much more extra time, but I do, I can do, spend more time in my workshop because um, I am still working as I mentioned, but stay tuned for more videos. And as always, this video is brought to you by my Patreon campaign. Link in the description below if you want to help support my videos. As you can see, their names go by my head. It's because then that I can set some time aside and make these videos. Huge thank you to my Patreon subscribers. And stay tuned for more videos. Till next time, this is Jay saying happy painting, stay healthy, and stay safe with me.